sorry about that. Uh, as Ken said, my name is Scott Esposito. Um, I'm a solution consultant within the construction engineering uh, business unit here at Oracle. Um, so I wanted to start just with a little quiz because I'm sure everyone knows a little bit about us in some capacity. Hitting the green button? Oh, there we go. Great. All right, so just a uh, little back there maybe. Okay. So Oracle, large corporation, founded 1977. Um, Primavera Systems, is anyone knows Primavera, right? Um, what year it was founded was 1983. Um, then we were acquired by Oracle back in 2008. Um, since then, we've been rebranded to construction and engineering. So our sole purpose is construction and engineering, right? So the suite of applications that we have against our platform um, is specifically for construction engineering. Um, just to give an illustration where we fall within Oracle as you know the big red machine. Um, so there are 10 global industry units. Um, so we're part of those 10, right? So we have our own development support staff. Um, everything that we do is within our group. So no one else from Oracle can say, I'm gonna give you guys a demo of P6 or sell you something. So it's all focused heavily just within our global industry unit itself, which is great. Um, I came from Primavera itself, so it's nice to still be in that space where we're heavily focused on helping our customers in the construction and engineering space. So uh, back in 20, 2020, McKenzie did a report about the evolution of the platform. So you probably heard from some of the other vendors too, it's about a platform play, right? So all about the platform. So Back when I was an inspector, my platform was a notepad and a clipboard. And I was an inspector in the city of San Francisco. So every single day I'd go to the job site trailer and make a photocopy of yesterday's daily reports and just change it. And then at the end of the day, I'd be at the laptop, or big, big computer actually, and I'd be logging my dailies into Excel, right? Um, fast forward a, li a little bit about the first generation platform is what I look at we have today, right? It's the adoption of a true enterprise platform that will do exactly what I used to do in the field, but with a mobile app nowadays. We collect a lot of data from that, right? Whether it's someone in the field, someone doing a schedule, all that data is essentially locked maybe in different, uh, different silos. So what we're doing with our intelligence platform is we're going to unlock some of that data, hopefully for you, um, and give you better insights in the data that you have, right? Make better decisions, more timely decisions. So we're building the next generation platform with a common data environment to achieve that to be able to take that data and extract that out into meaningful formats for your team and your stakeholders, your clients, your customers as well. So what, the, what is the smart construction platform? Well, first of all, the smart construction platform sits on the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, OCI, right? We love to use acronyms at Oracle. Um, what's exciting about this platform is we are the manufacturer of the platform and we are the manufacturer of the applications that reside on that platform. So everything is a Red Oracle Red Stack. Um, there's not third-party apps or freeware that's placed into any of our apps. So when we make strategic, strategic acquisitions, we like to call it, we're gonna Oracleize that product now, right? So we're gonna strip out all the code that's not Oracle code that we would pass from the security measure. And what sits in this infrastructure is our integration cloud. Um, which falls within the Magic Quadrant with Gartner as well. We do have AI machine learning services and a partnership with Azure. So their apps actually will run on an Oracle database within our um, ecosystem. Now, as we move up, you have the back office, the backbone ERP systems. It's not just our applications, even though this slide says Oracle Fusion applications, it's other applications. It could be third-party apps. It could be SAP. Um, Non-Oracle will fit with it as well. Now what rolls up to this is our Oracle construction and engineering applications that reside on this platform. So we do a lot of things within the construction engineering global business unit. We're not just a scheduling tool, we're a project management information tool. We're an AI machine learning application tool as well. So we'll support all of these applications in our ecosystem. We'll also take third-party apps as well into what we call the smart construction platform. So if there was a third party app that we needed to pull into the ecosystem, we can. The benefit is it's going to sit in this common data environment for extraction 
And what we can do from that is gain better insights and intelligence through predictive analysis um, and um, basically analytics as well. So we have machine learning and then we have the analytical piece. Um, both of those fall within what we call our intelligence cloud. Um, all that information is being driven up from the, our applications and other applications that are part of the smart construction platform, um, giving you that more compre comprehensive play. Now, as soon as you have, the smart construction platform is not a product you buy, you instantly become part of the ecosystem with any of our Primavera applications. So if you have Unifier or you have Aconex, you're instantly part of that smart construction platform. And the benefit of that as well is you're just logging into what we call the lobby. You're not logging into each individual applications through single sign-on, passes your credentials, lists all the projects that you have. And then you simply can just click on one of those and it'll drive you into that particular application. And if you wanna switch between applications, we have an application switcher that just allows you then to quickly switch to another application directly from that tool itself. So and we have pre-built integrations as well. So simply by connecting to the projects together, you're, you're pre-integrating our integration that we've developed out of the box already. Now you can develop further integrations, but we just deliver some um, out of the box integrations just to get our customers started. All right, so essentially what the smart construction platform is just connecting all the stakeholders. Um, I might be a scheduler, so I'm in P6 or Primavera Cloud. I might be a cost control engineer inside of Unifier. How do we collaborate in a, uh, an ecosystem like that? So it's basically driving all the stakeholders together, right? Um, I'm, my world is maybe very focused in scheduling where someone else is somewhere else, but the smart construction platform is gonna be able to bring all that data, mash it into, say, an analytical page to get all that content directly driven for our users. All right, so it's gonna be a little bit of eyesore just to start with, but, um, so as part of the smart construction application ecosystem, we have different types of adapters you can see in the middle, right? So we can leverage standard APIs, whether we do that for you, a partner does it, or your in-house IT department does that. We have the Oracle Integration Cloud. We also have another application that we use internally through our Oracle Consulting called the Project Integration Framework. Um, it is a GUI-based um, integration application where you write SQL commands essentially to um, connect multiple applications together and drive those integrations. We have large EPC firms using this to actually integrate um, not only our applications, but their in-house applications as well. Uh, you can do that through a standard RESTful service API call, but um, these larger firms love the, um, basically the GUI that'll tell you from a dashboard perspective um, what integrations broke, when they broke, and why they broke, so they can root cause analysis that. Um, so whether it's our applications, like I mentioned, or another type of third-party application that you use maybe to do prefab work versus, um, you know, material and supply chain, um, through the um, integration framework for the smart construction platform, we'll be able to bring those applications in. The benefit, of course, again, is to be able to drive that through the common data environment to give you better insights and reportability through dashboards or standard uh, business intelligence reports within the application itself. So I wanna just give a couple examples of some of the integrations that we have. And I'm, it's gonna lead up to why this, why I'm teeing this up a little bit. So pretty much everyone in the public sector space uses Esri, ArcGIS to some degree. Um, and we have pre-built integration between P6 and we have another application called Primavera Cloud, which is not P6 Cloud. It's essentially um, a light, lighter weight, easier version to use of P6. Um, and a good story around that is a lot of the people who are graduating nowadays or junior engineers, they're not schedulers. Um, they find P6 maybe too difficult to use. So we built something that will bridge the gap between P6 and Microsoft Project. So it has the same functionality, the same critical path methodology engine that P6 has. It's just a, a lighter interface, more intuitive to use. Um, a master scheduler is probably never going to go and adopt that. Hence why P6 is going to be around forever. Um, and Primavera Cloud is just going to be an alternative for those who find maybe P6 too cumbersome or heavy. Um, we do have direct integration between the two applications already. But we have this integration pre-built with Esri. Um, Esri is one of our partners. Um, they've got some nice videos on YouTube that you can watch. The integration between um, taking an activity, 
and aligning that, say, to a pipe or rail line, be able to turn on different types of layers. Do I want to look at wetlands or I want to look at weather? I want to look at the parcels I'm looking to uh, um, acquire uh, from a capital planning perspective. Um, so to be able to take something that you look from a Gantt chart and visualize it more into a, a spatial, we'll call it GIS kind of view, is, is very empowering. Um, a lot of it is drillable, um, so it'll actually drill down into the particular areas itself. Um, some examples of our project risk predictions. So I talked about earlier about our CIC, um, the Construction Intelligence Cloud. So we've built um, several types of different types of iterations of how this would work. So the first one is around schedule. So through our machine learning, we'll take a, a client's schedules, at least 10, the more the better, and through 80 plus um, machine learning techniques, it'll decipher and tell you, based upon this type of project, this location, um, these are the areas where you can expect a delay and how much of a delay and how much of a cost, right? Um, it's meant to be more pre, uh, pre uh, it's rather than being reactive, but you know, looking at it from a, um, an upfront planning perspective, right? So it'll give you those insights against that. We also have a workflow mechanism. This one's derived within Aconex, um, looking at potential risk on a project. And then the last one's a little new for us um, in our space for about a couple years now. They originated as a partner with us at the Innovation Lab, which I'm gonna show. From that, we actually acquired them. Um, new metrics for safety observations in AI. So one of the things that, um, well, I'll get into the next page. I think I, I think I have another slide that'll just go into a little more detail on that one, just to give you an example. Um, I'll go back one more just to, well, one of the things that's gonna do for you is gonna, once, once you to focus on what project's gonna have the most amount of uh, risk. So I wanna focus on 20% of my project's gonna have 80% or higher of risk. So we call that a Monday morning report. It's delivered to you automatically in your email, and it's gonna highlight the, the actual projects that are at risk. So what are the 20% of my projects that are gonna have 80% of your risk or incidents? And we have this via the dashboards as well where you can see that information. Um, and essentially, you're gonna to wanna to maybe gonna to go to the job site early, walk it, maybe talk with your crew in the morning. Um, these are the areas that we need to focus on based upon historical data that we got. It'll also target what, um, what projects will basically jump up um, in your report. So maybe last week that project was not even on the top 10. This week it's number two, right? Why is that? So it's gonna drive into the details to help you determine what you could do better on your project for that week in order to reduce the amount of um, incidents. Um, we'll, most, most people have some type of tool that already does that, so we have pre-built integrations already that will bring all your safety observations in, um, but we can record those as well on our end. Um, the big thing is just to be predictive of what's gonna happen or potentially happen this week based upon last week's data. So I mentioned where did this all stem from? This all stemmed from um, our Oracle Industry Lab. Um, we started, this, we started building this, uh, you can see on the left-hand side, it was a job site with a trailer. Um, that stood there probably for a little over a year or plus. And then we got funding from Oracle to say, why don't you go ahead and build an actual innovation lab that we can bring our customers to. So it took 10 months to complete. Um, we partnered with, I think, 13 different partners to do this. So it was in the height of COVID, right? So if you're on the job site with a hard hat, um, the camera would detect that and instantly send a notification to Unifier to say that there's a safety incident. Someone's not wearing a hard hat. It could be the distance between six feet as well. Um, so then essentially from this, we, we built the lab. Um, 10 months, not bad, on time and on budget, of course, because we used our own tools. <laughs> um, and then from that, we have experiences now. And so we work with you to decide what experience do you want to go through? We have 39 different partners at this lab. So are you interested in job site safety? Are you, are you interested in drones? Are you interested in uh, 3D modeling where you can put on VR goggles and walk through a job site? Um, we actually took a scan of the entire um, innovation lab and then we mirrored it up with the schedule. And basically the schedule would say, this is where we should be based upon the current schedule. But in reality is we only have a third of this work done. So it allows you to overlay 
what the schedule is going to say, what you're planning, and what is really occurring. So that's through one of our partners as well. Um, so you basically walk through an immersion experience based upon what you'd want to do. Um, we have three labs now, um, the Chicago one being the first one. It's about a 20-minute drive outside of O'Hare, so it's not downtown, which is nice. <laughs> we have one in Sydney and one in London as well. And the reason for this is we want to invite our partners here and our, and, and our customers. This is this all, all wet bed where we test the integration between our customers and our applications as well. So it's not, just, it's not just doing it in a silo. We bring them out to the lab. We work through a series of scripts. What should this look like? We'll test it with our customers. And based on feedback, we'll refine things as well. An example of one I did um, for a um, smart city one, you'll notice it was us, a local government agency with an Oracle, energy and water and manufacturing, right? So we're not the only ones at the lab. There are other global industry units that are there as well. And this is what they chose to do that day. And we'll basically, we'll walk you through and they'll go through an experience. We can also do it if the, if the group is quite large, as other people will go to different areas within the lab and do an experience. We have a dedicated staff there as well um, to walk you guys through all that stuff. Another just an example of just you know, what a day might look like there, um, you know, from a sample perspective. But there's an areas where we can do presentations, touch screens, um, take you out to the wet lab area, um, walk you guys through different experiences based upon, you know, we'll, we'll provide you the, the flyer for that. You guys select what you're interested in. Um, if you want to come alone or you want to bring it as more of a team, uh, my, my alone mean one company or multiple um, companies as well or entities as well. Um, within the lab itself. Um, it's, a, it's a nice, it's a really, it's a really cool experience. Um, we're working on the next experience that we're going to have at the lab as well. Um, something to involve the job site trailer. It's just been sitting there for, for a while right now. So we want to get that um, back up as an experience um, for the lab. Let's see, I got 45 seconds left. All right. Uh, I'm going to be on time because I'm from a scheduling software company. So um, thanks. Appreciate everyone's time.